Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Fantasy and Progress, a point in progress podcast. There was a lot of progress and a lot of podcasts in that in that whole sentence. A lot, mm-hmm. a lot of, a lot of p words happening. Welcome to yeah. episode three. We're 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 going um, we're a little short staff today. Yeah, mainly because we got a bunch of people right now out at Riot Fest. Correct. So today. It's just uh, Fee and I. Fee, how you doing? I'm doing great. It's been a long week, and it is it's, a Thursday. I was going to say it's a Thursday. <laughs> I'm drinking out of a monk that says, but first coffee. So, but it doesn't have coffee in it. But you're also off for four days now, right? So, Correct. Yeah. Which is why I should have filled this with alcohol. But here we are. I'm drinking regular orange juice in a bubbly. Nice. Heck yeah. Yeah. Um, why not? But yeah, this is our Final Fantasy podcast uh, where we kind of track our progression through the game. We talk about all the stuff that we don't like about it, stuff we like about it. That gets, we include stories. So there's a lot of spoilers that, that usually come up on, uh, on the podcast. But today, we're, we're, taking it, we're taking a step back and we'll go through the story because we're missing one of our core people, which is, uh, which is Frank. Um, so we're going to talk about... Today, we're gonna t- I'm gonna, we have a couple of topics we're going to be talking about. One is going to be uh, about the jobs that we play, right? Mm-hmm. So we, so Fee is a Dark Knight, so she's a tank main. I'm a healer main uh, for when for our playthrough that we're going through right now. Correct, yeah. And we're going to talk about the stuff that we like about them and the stuff that we don't like about about those jobs, and kind of like what we would what we would fix or what we would want changed. I know there's a live letter. By the time you guys hear this on that day, there should be a live letter today. So we might yeah. even see these changes at some point. I uh, don't know. Uh, also, a caveat is that uh, Fee is not level 80 yet, so she doesn't have all the skills, but she's like 74, I think. Correct. Or something like that. Uh, so still going through Stormblood. But uh, Fee, what are your thoughts so far on Dark Knight? Like, what, what, what are your favorite things about it? Well, um, as someone who played a... Death Knight and World of Warcraft, they kind of go kind of hand in hand in pairing. There are definitely obviously things. Um, obviously, there's no plague coil, which is a circle of pledgelance that you put on the ground as a Death Knight. And then, yeah, it's really gross. It's a thing. Um, thumbs up. Woo! <laughs> disgusting. Yeah, I know. It's. But positives i do have a um what is it i have salted earth as a melee i have the f- what is it is it it's not oh it's flood of darkness yeah. which is where the red black circle that's actually probably one of my favorite things about a dark knight mostly when it comes to like lower end because i remember as a group everyone's like that's really annoying because it looks like someone like it's a bad thing it's like i shouldn't be standing in this it's a red like pit of darkness you shouldn't be like have that ability and i'm like you know what i kind of like that i kind of like the kind of like the darker vibe especially with the contrast of playing a paladin for the first 50 levels or so actually i think i got up to 60 and then i finally got it once we got into heaven's sword yeah and so i switched over so it kind of had that contrast Am I a little bit upset that there's maybe having maybe a little bit more like the best kind of terminology I could think of off the top of my head, because I know Soul Eater has it is almost like a vampiric kind of ability, because I know paladins kind of have a little bit more of like the opportunities to kind of buffer themselves. Um, I know for paladin dark. for paladin it becomes more of an mp gauge thing i i know i know dark knight has the mp gauge as well where they yes. have to kind of kind of uh kind of um manage it a little bit but the yeah. thing is like for for dark knight you have carbon spit which brings back mp and then mm-hmm. your any your combo brings back mp as well but you only have to do that every 60 seconds right Correct, and it yeah. co- and it costs like 3000 mp so like every 60 seconds or so when it comes to paladin it is all MP uh, sustainability. So once mm-hmm. you get to, so this this only a, a, applies to level eighty. When you get record cast, which is a spell that makes all of your cast instant casts, 
yeah. your holy spirits and your holy circle they become instant cast and you have mm-hmm. to, and it costs 2000 mp and it goes all you take it all the way down to the last little bit you have use confeder your mp is gone and then you use your your skills to get that mp back again until that thing mm-hmm. is back up again before it's cool down so like they they have the similarities when it comes to that but the one thing that dark knight kind of differs from paladin is the hp recovery because soul leader is a huge thing yeah for every weapon i think it's for every weapon skill you do you get hp back uh because soul leader is the third in the rotation so you want to use hard slash and then after that you use goodness it's difficult to remember I think it, it's Siphon Strike after that. So yeah. it's Hard Slash, Siphon Strike, and then it's Soul Eater because it boosts off of that and delivers an attack um, with a potency of 100. And then the combo potency is 400. And then the bonus, um, the combo bonus is you restore HP, um, which is a cure potency of 300. Yeah. Um, combo bonus increases blood gauge by 20, which obviously you need to be doing those rotations to get all of those bonuses because it's better to do that than just to spam soul eater um because that would not be as beneficial um unless you're like quite concerned but even still you're not getting that combo bonus and health bonus okay uh, so the one i was thinking was blood weapon that's what i was thinking of but that doesn't give you yeah, hp yeah, it gives yeah, you yeah, mp yeah. correct so every weapon skill you do it gives you mp back so there's yes. so, so it, like i feel like the, the similarity is there when it comes to paladin and Dark Knight, mm-hmm. it's just the way that they do everything is different. It just looks yes. different, but the the outcome is almost kind of the same. Yeah, I know there is an ability. I haven't gotten it yet because I haven't done a good job for it, which is the Blackest Knight, which creates a barrier that absorbs 25% of the uh, maximum HP of the target. So um, uh, the Blackest Knight is the best tank ability in the entire game. Yeah. Behind Hollow Ground. Hollow Ground is the best tank uh, invulnerability in the game, sure. but the Blackest Knight is the best uh, cooldown in the game because you can throw that on anybody, which is the best part of it. Yeah, You can throw it on yourself, you can throw it on to uh, another tank that's going to get Tank Buster, or you can throw it on a person that's weakened or something like that. You can throw it on anybody you want. And that, 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 that ability is probably the most, I feel like the most underrated ability when it comes to Dark Knight. It, it, it pretty much puts Dark Knight on, on like the next level of when it comes to tanks. Yeah. No, I I could definitely see that, and I'm really excited. Like, I need to go and actually probably do that in the next day or so, is to just go and grab that, because it'll definitely help. I know it hasn't been too much of a rush, because we haven't really been jumping to raids recently. Um, we've been mostly doing story quests, and then if we do an extreme, we usually kind of just boost it, so it's okay that way. So I haven't really felt the strenuous need to get it, but I know once we get into rating and once we get into et- end game content, I will definitely need that. Also, I want to know what's happening in the story because, um, and I said this on our last podcast, that uh, Dark Knight has the best storyline when it comes to, like, I'm sorry. Like, I know I haven't played all of them. I get it, like, by all means. But, like, from for me... I don't think it could get any better than the Dark Knight story quest when it comes to just the overall job quest line that you have for the Dark Knights. Because I I decided to spoil it, spoil it for me a little bit because I wanted to know what the last ability I get at level 80. And it's actually associated with the storyline, which is kind of cool. So- um, and... I wanted to <clears throat> make sure I got this right. Sure. Uh, the lady or the the woman that's uh, writing that uh, wrote the uh, that's writing Endwalker. She's got all of Endwalker. Sure. Uh, yeah. Her name is Natsuko Ishikawa. Mm-hmm. She r- wrote. She was a lead writer of the MSQ for Shadowbringers. Yeah. And she was the lead writer for the Dark Knight quest line. I am not shocked. Like, yeah. I have heard nothing but good things about Shadowbringers, and the storyline is impeccable. And for people who are listening, the last ability for Dark Knight is called Living Shadow, which you conjure a... Oh my gosh, why did I decide to read this? Salon... Simul... Oh no. <laughs> why is this... A simulacrum. 
of dark side to fight alongside so it's pretty much a clone of yourself correct because that is um something that happens in the storyline where you find out that you're essentially fighting yourself i'm not going to say how you find out because that's something you're going to have to find out by yourself but it is an internal like it's an internal like turmoil that you have trying to kind of gauge because you are like it goes into play that you are the warrior of light but you also need to accept the darkness to be able to become the true dark knight that you are like you want to become and so it is so good i was even shocked when it happened like what the fuck and so that was really exciting for me because usually when it comes to stories i tend to find out the plot quite quickly but with that one it came out from left field so good on her she freaking killed it so i'm very excited for Shadowbringers even more now that i know that she was the one who was the head writer on that yeah, because she, it was so good she was the main uh, uh, writer for that and now she is the main writer for ann walker as well yeah because she freaking kills it yeah she, so kills she, she she came out and said um what you need to know before ann walker comes out what yeah. or what are the stories and what are the quests you need to finish before the expansion comes out yeah. And she gave a big list to be like, this is what you guys need to know for when Endwalker comes up. Because Endwalker is, in all, in, the, in all seriousness, it is the end of the Ascian story. So it's the end of what we've been doing for the last eight years or something like that. Yeah. So we're finally getting the conclusion. So that's why she's just like, you guys need to know this story. You, got, you need to know Coil. You need to know Omega. You need to know Bosja. And then some other stuff as well that's, that's like in and out. All, you need to do all the job quests as well for every job. So that you know, or at least your job that you're going to be playing. Okay. Right? Not all jobs, but like the job you're going to be playing. Make sure you get all the all the job quests done as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. Because so... I was about to say I'm like. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think Square Enix would ever make you like do all of like level eighty quests and stuff yeah. like that. I haven't even done all of them. Right. I've yeah. skipped. I've skipped all of uh, all of um, Summoner because that job has. I have zero interest in that job yeah that would also make the game like once endwalker comes out very much like a like a top tier like one percent club because i don't even know that a lot like the majority of the people like i know there's a lot of people who've done every single story quest when it comes to jobs but there's still people who are like out there that are like i'm not gonna play this particular i'm not gonna play a thermic verge like i'm not gonna do that yeah. like oh, i yeah. don't want to play any healers so that'd be like a big slap in the face like <laughs> hey you've been playing this game for eight years now you're not gonna understand the story because you decided not to play that one tank <laughs> yeah yeah exactly like, people are like uh like me i was gonna say us like me where we just i just go through all of the stories and like obviously i skipped a lot of the stuff because like i some of the stories i just don't care about like astro story yeah. is boring to me but like I, I I am gonna go back and try to see if I can find like a video that just summarizes sure. each one, and I can just get us get my story through that way. Yeah. Right. No, I am. Um, yeah, my plan is this over the next four days is finish up, um, storm, stormblood, stormblood. I'm sorry, I get shadow. Like I almost say, Some like people storm say stormbringers. Bringers. Yeah, everybody fucking yeah. says stormbringer. I almost said <laughs> stormbringer because why do you start both expansions with an S? My brain is like, <sighs> and they're also like they start with a B. It's storm blood and shadow bringers. Like, why? it's funny because when they did the uh, abbreviation for storm blood, it was S B, and then for shadow bringers, S H B. So S lowercase h and then b because both of them have b as, as, uh, s and b in them. <laughs> no absolutely not yeah. but i did think of one other thing i would change so you want to okay okay what yeah what would you change for the for the job itself there is one that i can barely ever use because if i say i'm gonna use it everyone's like don't click it and it's living dead like every so often like i really want to click it but then like <laughs> So li <laughs> yeah living dead I, I i wish that half of these like jobs had a good invol skill as like as good as a paladin does paladin has the best one where you did you don't take any damage for seven seconds zero damage taken yeah. there's no repercussions to it at all I, except the I just... except the cooldown timer that's it it's like a it's like a five minute cooldown 
I just feel like Living Dead is this like, hey, fuck you healers. Now you have to pay attention to me. Like, I know everyone else is dying, but you don't. You don't heal the main tank. Everyone's gonna die. Guess what? Because I decided to click Living Dead. Oh man. Like, why? Like, oh, if you hit one percent but don't get healed up within ten seconds, you're gonna die. Yeah. The full. You could be at ninety percent, but since you didn't get to hundred percent, you could be at ninety eight. You could be at ninety eight, and you could you just die because you never got to hundred percent. I mean, I love it. I love that. I like. For a technical standpoint, and I know once we get into like rating, it's going to be a huge pain in the ass. But I like mean, you, you, you think it's going to be a pain in the ass, but it's actually not that big of a pain in the ass. But it's more a pain in the ass in like dungeons and stuff because a lot of healers aren't sure. like you know accustomed to Living Dead. But when it comes to rating and stuff, yeah. usually when when uh, the involves happen, you know when they're going to happen. Sure. Right, or do you announce that you're gonna pl- use Living Dead, or I'm gonna announce, or like when when a uh, Gunbreaker says I'm gonna use whatever there's called, I think it's super emboldened or something like that, where they just shoot themselves in the head sure. and then they just go back to what it's it's just weird, weird skills. Weird, yeah, weird, yeah. No. But I, I, it is a frustrating skill for the most part because mm-hmm. it's like you have doom on yourself, and the only way to get it off is by healing you to max health. And, and tanks have a lot of health. Because they, they all have it, Vit's, Vit is their main stat. Yeah. I think I'm currently sitting at around 42k. Yeah. Um, With just like my 70 gear. And I'm not, like, it's not like the best 70 gear either. So I'm, it's still a lot of health. And that's why I try not to use it. Unless it's like a dire situation, and I know the person who's healing is in our, I know on Discord because I don't want to just click on that if we are in a really sketchy situation and the healer is brand new, or they don't know what it is, or they've never dealt with a Dark Knight before. It's a great way like, to make them panic. <laughs> they're like, "You were at ninety percent. Why'd you die?" And it's just like, "Hey, I just I decided to click on Living Dead. It's all your fault. <laughs> this is what you get." <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. I, I can only oh I, continue. No, I was just gonna say it's just, it's 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 cool that they do that for these jobs, but I do feel like when the li- like I feel like they gotta address the involves for a lot of the tanks. Yeah, they gotta they gotta address because like home gang is really good too for warrior, but again it puts you down to like one health, and then they have to heal you up. But it's got you have a shorter time. You only have six seconds for for home gang. To get people yeah. up to a certain amount. Like, it's not even a certain amount of HP for that. That's just heal them. That's it. There's no, like, you have to get to 100% or they die or anything like that. But you only have six yeah. seconds for that. And then the Gunbreaker one is just, it's the same thing. You just heal them as much as you can. It's, it's the Dark Knight one that is the hardest on the healers when it comes to that. But if you have a White Mage Benediction done, you don't need to worry about it. Keep your Benediction ready for that. Yeah. Because that gets you to full health right away. Yeah. That brings me yeah. into, like, for, for healers, so I play Astrologian. Sure. One of the main problems, like, I like the card system. The card system is really good. It's really fun. Yeah. Uh, the way they've changed it is it's a lot more simpler to know what cards you're drawing or what cards, what, what they do and stuff like that. I don't need a chart anymore on my other screen to be like, what does this card do? What does the balance card do? Okay, what, what does the Uwer card do? I don't need to worry about that anymore. The problem with... Astro is that it doesn't know if it needs to be a pure healer or a shield healer. And it all depends on what your main healer is. So if your main healer is white mage, so if you have two white mage, if you have two healers in the party, you have to look at the other mage and be like, what are you? If he's a healer, like a like a white mage, you have yep. to do nocturnal stance, which gives you shields. And the shield's not great for the most part. Because yeah. Scholar excels at shields. And then it puts it puts uh, Astro in a very tough position because they still can, and then if you go diurnal sect which is region, it's not as good as white mage. So you're like you're like in the middle all the time, all the time. So I know they're addressing this in uh, the live letter and they're addressing it in Endwalker, saying that they're going to become pure healers. They're not doing any yeah. shielding or anything anymore. So that makes me really excited because I love that job. I love the celestial. Uh, uh, I think it's called celestial opposition where. You put a, a, an AoE down after about nine seconds, it explodes automatically and heals everybody for, sure. for like, like 
a crit heal pretty much and does damage to whoever's inside of it which is really nice like it, it they've got really really cool skills it's just their utility i like i still rather have a white mage scholar in my party because it's just you have the best of both worlds in that part sure and that astro is it's just it just stuck in the middle i feel stuck in like purgatory of like main healing or like pure healing or shield healing and i i've i've I, I, I like this job, but I want I want it to be a little bit better. Because I, I, I want to play it as a raid. I want to play it in raid, for sure. For sure. If you, if you had to compare this healer to, like, any other healer in another game, what would be the closest that you would think? Like, man, this an astrologian is like this. An astrologian is like this. I don't know if I could compare it to anything really because I okay. don't know. Like World of Warcraft doesn't have a card based healer or anything like that, right? Oh, absolutely not. Yeah, like their healers are paladins, right? Paladins are healers, which always paladins. fucking throws me off. Uh, and then just druids. Druids are a healer, shaman, and then priests. And then priests, yeah. yeah. I I don't think I could compare this. The best thing I could say is that they're a jack of all trades, the master of none. That's really where they are. Okay. And it sucks. And it sucks. Yeah. But they're getting they're getting an overhaul. So well not overhaul, but they're getting some changes. Maybe an overhaul, who knows? But uh it's gonna be nice to nice to see that for sure. Yeah. For sure. I could I could definitely understand that. I at least in, I think it's kind of interesting when I play World of Warcraft. I loved healing. Like healing was like my go-to number one. I played all the healers, even though I hate. God forbid, I had to play a priest at some point. I just I was not happy. People be like, "Hey, you have a max priest," and I'm like, "I do on the alliance, and that's where she's staying because I'm never playing priest." Like I kept her on the alliance, so I never had to play her because no one I knew played on the alliance. Yeah. Um. So no, I loved healing but then once i got into this game you tried to explain to heal um healing to me once and you're like yeah it's like this you also have to dps and you have to like juggle x y and z and i'm like so i'm tanking <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it, it's a weird concept in this game because in most games healers don't dps right healers heal right and that's really all they do and dpsing isn't part of their rotations quote-unquote rotations yeah. It. Oh, continue. I was saying, in this game, you need to the healers need to DPS. If you don't, you're not gonna hit DPS checks, especially if you're fresh into a fight. You won't be able to hit that DPS check. No, we like in World of Warcraft. The only thing closest to that would be a disc priest, which was a discipline priest, which was a balance between healing and DPS. It was kind of like they had holy for straight healing no dps discipline was you had to balance between light and darkness and then it was the same thing for shadow priests shadow priests were they had a shadow ability they would go around but you had to balance like your light and dark um which almost kind of reminds me funny enough of a red mage i was, I was about to say balance. i was about to say that but before we get into that before we get into yes, that before we get into that I, but those those jobs that you're talking about they always have a main healer though right over them correct because they yeah. can't heal by themselves priests can holy like holy priests can like at some point they were considered the best healers and then it kind of rotates depending on the expansion and what rate is like the or the boosts or changes it's never going to be shaman because they hated on shamans from like i don't know what happened there's an entire lore about the shaman hate in that video game um except there was a like a renaissance period in um wrath of lich king but then they got shot on in cataclysm that's a whole other thing either way um but yeah holy is their main heal discipline is an off kind of a job that you could do or talent tree Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, talent trees are also something that are not a thing in this game either, right? So you, Not you, at all. You just get to that level, you get the you get the skill, let's keep going, right? Yeah. So yeah, you you got a new obsession. 
I do. Uh, a red mage. How yes, how I do. how was that learning that? I what. I remember when I first started playing this game, I'm like, I'm not playing DPS. I am not going to play a DPS. I do not want a DPS. That's not my thing. And then I was just, one night I was like, okay, I want to play Samurai. Because we watched the trailer for Stormblood, and I'm like, the Samurai looks sick. And we were playing it. I know Frank was playing it as well. And then one day, he, I'm, <laughs> we were trying to figure out what we were going to do. And I was just like, I was kind of on the fence and I was like looking at the samurai and I'm like, okay, samurai is like fun, but I'm not really like, it's not something I'm super excited about. And then I, rem we, I asked Frank if he wanted to join us and he's like, what are you going to play? And I'm like, I'm just going to play the samurai. And he's like, oh, I'll play my samurai too. And it's like dot, dot, dot. So how easy is it to play a red mage? <laughs> and so <laughs> you kind of explained to me hey here's how you play red mage and i just kind of hopped on that bat bandwagon and i haven't really looked back like it's a mixture i'm not a fan of range i thought it was very dumb because i'm very much i like melee and so i'm like i want to be up in the action i want to be the one like hitting like going crazy like bang bang if i'm not healing i want to be like a melee yeah, But this is kind of like a happy medium between the two because you do spend a lot of time casting which and trying to get that balance, which at the beginning, and sometimes I do end up like if I'm kind of just like focusing in, I might just not pay attention to my gauge. And then I'm like, oh my God, I'm at 80 on the light and I need to balance that with dark. Like, ah! that's, but the, <laughs> see, that's the, that's the good thing. You don't get penalized for that really for not this job because like, it's not like, uh, monsters in this game have any weaknesses yeah. slash resistances, right? So it, that is also something that people throws people off too. Because mm -hmm. Black Mage, for example, only has uh, fire, thunder, and a uh, fire blizzard, or fire, ice, and thunder. That's all they have. And then yeah. when you fight like something fire, new people are like, "Why am I fighting fire with fire? Like this is weird." Because like you would do less damage. But none of that stuff, even like they took they took all resistance stuff out of the game. Period. Right, so like it doesn't it even is matter. Very anymore. nice. Yeah, so it like you nice. don't you don't get penalized if you take light all the way to hundred and then work on dark, or if you get dark all the way to hundred. Mm -hmm. But then the ability to just like okay, my gauge is at eighty. You hop in, you use your sword because you don't have like a you don't have a staff, you don't have a wand, you have a freaking rapier, and you go to town on this until your gauge goes to zero, and then you're like peace out, homies, and you do a backflip backwards. And you're just now back into range. And so you're like, I only need to come in to do some massive ass damage. And then I'm just going to peace out. Peace. Like there is literally a video of me going like, bye bye as I jumped away. <laughs> because I'm like, I'm not staying here. There is, um, there is that video. No, it's just a very happy medium. And I'm, I'm really, really enjoying it. So I'm trying to level it up. I don't think it's going to be my main. And when we're raiding, I'm still, I'm, I'm going to be made like focusing on a tank, but I appreciate the fact that when it comes to a DPS, they do have abilities that do help the group. They do have a heal if they really need a heal. And um, once I get to a specific level, I am able to res, and so I'm able to help and benefit the group. Also, a melee buff for everyone else. Yeah, and Bolden. Um, and Bolden yeah, is. Bolden. And Bolden is. Uh... Yeah, your own magic magic attack, and then everybody gets physical attack up, yeah. Yeah, it's, I, that was one thing I kind of, like, was a bit disappointed when it came to Samurai, that they didn't have as many buffs, or at least boosts to the group. And when I play a class, I want ha to play something that helps the entire team, not just myself. And so Red Mage, it looked really cool. There was a rapier. I should have pulled out the rapier that's in that closet over there. Because Lucas used defense, and so I could just pull that out. And be, maybe next time. Maybe, maybe next when we're time. talking about Stormblood, I'll just pull it out and then be like, "What? Well, I'll have the even have the helmet. I'll wear the helmet at the beginning. Who knows? If you're listening this far, maybe we'll do it. Who knows? <laughs> but there's no fencing, and you know what? Never mind. <laughs> you know what? Why not? It's, it works. I mean, they have a helmet at some point that looks like a fencing helmet. So do they? Um. I think it's in Stormblood, if I remember correctly. It'll probably be in Stormblood, because that's when the job gets introduced as well, right? So Yeah. 
<clears throat> yeah, I I really enjoyed uh, Red Mage. It was uh, it was really fun learning that job, and then mm-hmm. once it gets into like the nitty gritty of like the ending part, like w- with like when you start getting Verholy and Verflare, it really really starts to ramp up, and then with Scorch as mm-hmm. well, where it's, like. Red mages can easily be top DPS in a lot of places because of how much burst damage they can do compared to other yeah. drops. It looks crazy. Yeah. Just like going through the list of like different spells and abilities they get, you're just like, okay, you're this goes hard. Yeah, Scorch at 80. Yeah, Scorch is at 80, which is your, your big one of your biggest it is your biggest skill as a potent yeah. 700, which is uh has a chance of happening. If you proc your Verholy or your Ver, Ver uh, Flare, then has a chance yeah. of a... That's, that's also a thing, right? Because, like, this is different from your classes, from, from other classes, where everything is luck-based when it comes to this, or mm-hmm. RNG-based when it comes to, like, Jolt. And then once you use Jolt, you use one of your Ver Arrows, or uh, I think it's... What do you use? Ver Thunder. You have a chance of proccing yeah. Ver Fire, or then if you use Ver... Uh, for arrow, you have uh, I think a chance of I think it's the other way around. Sorry, it's the other way around. Your ver fire has a chance of proccing your ver thunder, or stone has a chance of proccing ver, uh, ver arrow, right? That RNG is just it, it feels like when you don't get your RNG, you feel like you're not doing enough damage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. I get, I just get even confused when we're in like anything lower than a level fifty dungeon, because I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Because it is, ver thunder into ver fire, and then verero into ver stone, but you don't get ver stone until level thirty, and so some of the dungeons that we've been doing might be like a level twenty eight, and so I'm like, okay, so I got ver fire, but I don't have ver stone, or I just don't have ver fire at all, and so I'm just sitting there spamming ver thunder and verero, yeah. like. Did, did, like okay and then all, half of my bar is like blank and then i'm like i don't even know what yeah I'm, everything's I, pretty out that is i think that's a problem innately with final fantasy where anything below 50 i feel like you can't get the most out of the job yeah right that happens with samurai as well like as time you can only get two of the stickers out of the three uh it happens with red mage it happens mm-hmm. with uh I think it happens with Dragoon as well. Like there, there, it's just level fifty is like the, the happy medium, and mm-hmm. then level sixty is the true potential of the job. And then everything after sixty kind of just just adds a little extra yeah. thing in there, just uh, just to make your rotation a little bit different. But sixty is, I feel like the the best part of the job, and mm-hmm. then you start adding on to it after that. I know once we all hit level 80, it's going to be a lot better for us if we run as a group because we learn, at least I learned recently that if you're in an entire group, you have an option when you're doing like a leveling roulette that you can kind of like limit it to any of the dungeons within, I think it's 14 or 16 levels. Yeah. Um. So it kind of limits that way. So when we hit 80, the lowest we're going to see is what 64, 66. Yeah, it'll be something uh, in uh, in Stormblood. It'll be something in Stormblood. Would be the. It's going to be something in Stormblood. So that would definitely make it a lot easier, and then we don't have to worry about that. But you have to have a full party, which is kind of the double edged sword. If you want to, like, let's say I want to do a dungeon by myself in leveling roulette, unless I want to specifically select on one, but I don't get the bonuses. That- after like the first one of the day, then you don't need to worry about it. Like F the roulette, no, sorry, roulette system. You can just do your own thing <laughs> because you get more points um, because it's best to just run a dungeon that's in your level spec. So if you're a level 64, you want to grab a dungeon that's in the 64 range, um, which would be something in Stormblood um, if you've unlocked all of them. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So come, coming from the job section, because like yeah, we, sure. you're branching out, which I which I like, because like this this game is all about branching out, doing other things while while you can, because there's there's so much to do in this game that it does yeah. feel overwhelming after a little while uh, until you start knocking everything out. What what has been your your favorite fight in the game so far that we went through? This could be story. This could be dungeon. EX is a little bit weird because we've been kind of we did a little bit of EX 
and raids, but then we just kind of face rolled through them <laughs> for the most Correct. part because we are running out of time. We're we're on kind of a time crunch before Endwalker comes out. Yeah. Um, because once Endwalker comes out, that's honestly that's going to be the podcast. What's going to be what, what our thoughts about Endwalker, about the story and stuff like that. So we are yeah. trying to get there as fast as possible. And we won't be able to go through all the raid tiers. No, we won't. Um, I. That's a very difficult question. I'm trying to like go through all the fights in my head, um, and just trying to balance. Last weekend, I ran a. Um, I ran a trial with Lucas, for a number of hours, specifically to get him, <laughs> a weapon. The Great King ours. Moogle Mog. Great King Moogle Mog. Now, I gained some respect, mostly because of just the way, like, obviously with me running it multiple times, I got to see how each Moogle actually reacted and responded. And one of the cutest things that you see is, like, they're all, like, you've completed all of them, and now they've re rezzed and now they're trying to summon Big King Moogle Mog. And you just see the dark, <laughs> the black mage trying his hardest because everyone's dancing, like having a good time. But he's just like, you guys, you fucking jerks. I have to sit here summoning like the King Mooglemog and you guys are just dancing. It's just like, and there's like sweat coming off of his forehead and he's just like trying his best to keep up with the dance. And I'm like, okay, I respect you. Even though you're the first person we have to take out each and every time like you know this guy is carrying everyone on his back like it is the end of school year presentation like project he's done all and the, the work. black maid <laughs> he did all the work and he carried the entire team as his entire group's just doing a little dance um so no i i like that fight just because of just like one the music got stuck in my head forever. yeah if you do it for a couple hours for sure yeah no, I mentioned the last podcast as well. Shiva's fight was really good. I really appreciated that fight um, just because of just the creativity that they had and also just like the freezing and then everything goes quiet. Like Their transitions kids. are so good. Yeah. Their transitions no. through their fights have been really, really good. Like the Shiva one's really good. Uh, we did Zervan. Zervan's is not too bad. Uh, but like Nidhogg's is really, really good. And then I think Sophia's is one of the best ones. I, yeah. I, that is out of Heaven's Ward, that might be one of my favorite fights is Sophia. Yeah. Sophia's really, really good. Like, I wasn't prepared to like it as much because I remember watching the video because I wanted to, like, really get an understanding and grasp of it. Because I remember the night before, two nights before, we did another fight and we just kept on wiping. And I'm like, okay, I need to study this. I'm main tanking it. I need to make sure I got everything on lock. So I watched the videos and everything. I'm like, this is actually pretty cool. Do I think it's weird that she's riding her daughter's head around the entire like platform? Sure. But we're not here to judge like cool beans. Like you do you, Sophia, like cool beans. Um, but no, it's just, it's really cool. And the, just the, the techniques and also like the balancing act and needing to remember like, okay, there's, three lines going this way and there's two lines going this way so it's an um an odd like specific number and so you have to like run to that particular side with with my goodness the side that had the most lines so the one that had three lines but also go to a specific mark on the platform because if you don't you're fucking dead yeah like peace out homies you're done i if i do have to see the first fighter again i will in fact um <laughs> it's on it's on site that fucking guy i didn't understand until we finished the fight that it meant if it indicated the shields on the sides it stays like that not just until the shields disappear but until the next time the shields appear to indicate that it's another way i didn't know that as i was kept on it, getting knocked off it legit it, I don't think it's until the next one. It, it lasts about seven seconds. And I think his recast is 10. So there's a three second window where it, there's nothing, but it does last for a long period of time. Yeah. yeah. For tanking, that's forever. Yeah. Seven seconds on this podcast, it's literally me getting to the end of the second, like the <laughs> sentence. But <laughs> when you're raiding and when you're tanking, that is make or break. I don't count 
like a second correctly and I get knocked off the side and then everyone's like, why'd we do that? And it's just like, I've been doing great the entire rest of the fight. It's just this one particular point. And I can sit here and happily say, I did very well in that fight, except for that one particular time, like that one particular point in that fight. Everything else, I'm dancing, I'm moving, I'm grooving, I'm going to the right sides, I'm telling people where to go, and then it's just like, that one thing, the one thing. The uh, the funny thing about Ooh. that, I, I used to do it on my Paladin, and yeah. Paladin did, didn't used to have like their uh, Total Eclipse, like their AoE thing. Sure, sure. They used to have yeah. Flash to, do AO, to, to get aggro, yeah. and that worked out perfectly for Paladins because Flash does no damage. So you can just sit oh there God. flashing, and you'll never lose hate, and you don't have to worry about being pushed off because that damage, it does no damage. So oh it, it it worked out it worked out really well, but I can see how much of a problem that that can be. It's so annoying because I would spend most of my time like looking away from it, and I think someone commented like, "Why is Fee looking away from the first like fighter?" And I'm like, "Because I can't attack him. Because the second I attack him, I'm gonna get knocked over to the side. Let me live." <laughs> like I don't know. What to do. <laughs> also, at that particular, there's an like in the middle of that particular fight. You have to look away anyway because um, Sophia does her flash. And so you're just like, okay, I'm just going to look at this corner and just not do anything. I clicked on X. I'm not doing shit. Leave me alone. You can hit my back. People are healing me. Do your Get your anger out. I don't, like, I'm super done with, like, looking at you. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to get knocked off this pillar because it is. At least you don't, like, you don't disappear. You mm. get summoned back onto the platform, which is the best part of that. Into, like, yeah, it was. I think after Sephiroth, they they changed it because, uh, yeah, it, it had to be because on Sephiroth you couldn't come back. No, once you fall off. So after Sephiroth, because like right after Sephiroth is Sophia. So yeah, yeah. Switch, because like because that fight, its mechanic is literally falling off. Yeah, like your your mechanic is like if you fall off, you, you're fucked up. You got to be able to get those people back because it is uh. a core mechanic of the fight. Yeah, you know, you know what? I I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take it on a little bit of a trip. I'm gonna say the worst fight in Final Fantasy XIV. It is a white fucking whale oh. called Bismarck. I am <laughs> sick of seeing his white, ugly like face, mouth, whatever, roaring at me because we've run it twenty four times, Harv. I know this because that's how many marks I currently have in my bag. Saying I did not get this mount yet. I am so... <laughs> We're going to hit the 99. <laughs> we might. Mark. We might. And I'm just going to be like, okay, cool. I get to turn this in to get this mount. And I never have to see his face again. Why? Why? <laughs> we actually, we legit might, honestly. Uh, and we probably won't. We probably won't. Like, no. The, the drop rate isn't that bad, but it is kind of weird that it hasn't dropped. That, the problem with that fight is that it takes so long to get the fight done because sure. there's so much dead time in it of you yeah. trying to wait for, he, for him to hit you to get the dragon killer's work. There's just a lot. There's just a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to talk to you about music. Ooh. So we've gone through a fair amount of dungeons and primals and stuff like that. and, and Sure. Uh, and some coil. The coil pretty much has the same music uh, when you go through, except once you get to the certain turns. Um, what has been your favorite music? I mean, one of my favorite songs we haven't even gotten to yet. So. <laughs> Which one's that one? Lahi. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. We haven't got to the Rectica Great ones yet. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. That song just kills me every single time. I'm. Other than the frickin' King Moogle Mog, Night Before Christmas, like, creepy weird song talking about death and everything. Um, that's a very good question. I, you know what? One of my favorite songs in the game is Nighttime or, like, t like Dawn in Ulda. Just, like, the very calm music. Like, yeah, it's really cool during the day. Everything's bustling. Everything's going crazy. But just kind of like the chill music at night just kind of like sets a mood. And you're like, okay, this is just a calm time, calm period. And you're just kind of like 
running around, at least for me, and I used to do this a lot in WoW, and I tend to do this in this game as well, and I need to stop, is I'll just like start running around while we're talking in Discord. So we'll be sitting there as a group, and instead of doing dungeons, which I should be doing, I'm running around and then just like listening to me, or I'll just be sitting yeah. at the Grand Company in those like windows, like the fake windows. It's just like these openings, and I'll just sit there, and I'm like, this is just a vibe. And it just makes me really happy. It's one of the um, coolest things in this game is that every theme has a dark, has a, has a nighttime theme and a daytime theme. It's, yeah. I don't think I've played a game that has both of those before. Mm-mm. Right? Because, like, going into a different city or even, like, zones, like, different zones yeah. has that, too. Because I know they, I know every zone in Shadowbringers has that. It has a nighttime uh, theme and it has a daytime theme. I think uh, Stormblood does the same thing, but I could yeah. be wrong, but I'm not 100% sure. But that really makes me like makes me happy because they they put time and effort into that. And they they, they bring the the ambiance of what that is, right? So like in the dur- mm-hmm. during the day, it is very um boisterous when you go to Old mm-hmm. It is like uh Everybody's getting up, you know, everybody's doing their thing. And then when nighttime hits, it's very somber. It's very, um, very mellow because it's like, okay, let's, let's, let's bring it down a little bit. Let's bring it down a little bit. No, there's, that makes it really good. And then there's also like the fight, like the battle music, like the Nidhogg, the post Heaven's Word, which we'll get into. Like that song is absolutely amazing and then we have the song that shiva has and i know i constantly joke around about the fact that it just sounds like an anime like at the end of the season and everyone's like it was the opening to the anime but they've like made it like a little bit more like punchy and you're just like we can do this as a team and then you're just like yeah and then you're like going in and fighting like it just gets you hype it's and we've said this multiple times and i will say this until who knows when is final fantasy is very anime and i love it and that's just the stuff that you're looking for when you're like okay i need to get hype for this fight and you're just like this is it this is the exact thing that i need to hear for this particular portion i don't know if this is true for this game but you know when people see this game they say like that's mm-hmm. a weeb shit right that's a weeb yeah. shit right there right you got sure. you got like the 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 cat girls you got the the bunny girls and the cat guys Mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff but i mean like for the most part this game i i I can't constitute this as weeb shit because shit gets dark in this game yes like there is actual consequences there's actual shit that's happening in the world where people either are dying there are um things happening in the city states where they're they're being covered up of like Mm -hmm. bigger like there's a bigger picture that, that, that kind of type thing, which kind of makes me really happy at the direction that they took because they're not afraid yeah. to hit those those lines or cross those yeah. lines when it comes to this game. One of the other things that, 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 I, that I was thinking about was um, that this story kind of gives your character more of like a moral compass compared to a lot of other games yes. where... When you when you go on a mission, you want to try to find out as much as you possibly can. Mm-hmm. You try to see like you try to see where they're coming from. You try to see where you're coming from, and then try to find a middle ground. If that middle ground is just you killing the other person, it is what it is, right? Yeah. But but you explore that every time I play like a different game, like like I guess WoW is the other one that that that, that I think of is like you know what, go kill this person. We're done. Yeah. No, it's it's. Yeah, I agree. And what I like about this game is you can get very lost and kind of almost even forget that millions of other people have done this storyline. People have gone through this quest line because you feel like you're in this storyline. Your character is the one going through this. And wow, it's just like, once again, you get slapped with a quest. And yeah, you could read it, and sometimes, especially like later game, you kind of get into cutscenes, but nothing in compared to just you can tell it's very disjointed to a point where you're just like, okay, this is just the motions. Whereas with um the main story quest in Final Fantasy, 
you feel like your character is going through this you're experiencing this loss you're experiencing this gain rather than okay you killed 15 um thunderbucks and now you've got their skins and now you get to give them to you x y and z and okay cool you get to do this one little thing it was always just like when i played wow well, at least for myself it was very much like okay that's my character and that's me but when i'm playing this game it's very much like okay my character and i are experiencing this storyline and it, whatever i'm like specifically like this story is something that you're experiencing and you're not just like being th either like okay this is just kind of some i'm trying to find words at this point i am kind of just like jumbled up like here here's a bunch of like side quests that you can do and then you don't really need to pay attention to the main story but with this it's very much like this is what your character is experiencing from the very start which is when you got um get on that caravan to where you are now yeah. um so i think it's really really interesting at first i thought it was going to be weird i'm not gonna lie i thought it was going to be weird i'm like okay this is to be like just like when i played wow and then you're just like click 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 done click 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 okay and here's like a quest and i'm just gonna walk away even the side quests are very entailing to a point where a girl tries to marry her dead boss that's a whole other story you can figure <laughs> it out yourself i don't even know at that point like i stopped for a little bit and that quest is still sitting there and they're still waiting to get married um but <laughs> The main story quest, even though we'll talk about it when we get to Stormblood, um, it's really nice to be able to play that not only as a group, but you can play it solo and you can go through that and just, God, it's really good storytelling. It's just very, very good storytelling at the end of the day. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I am a huge Final Fantasy fan and this is kind of the way that I want my stories to be told. Yeah. Where I, like the only way to progress through the game is through story. And yeah. that's what I want from my from my RPGs. And that's what I want from a Final Fantasy game. And if anybody's going to be able to do it, it's Square Enix. Because they've been doing it for years. Years. Some good. Some bad. Some excellent, right? Some downright yeah. just skip and never look at again. But they, they do it. That's their formula. And knowing that we're going to get that in the next expansion in Endwalker... Knowing that you guys are experiencing that in Shadowbringer soon is yeah. very exciting for me. Very exciting for me. And I can't wait. I think by the time we get into Shadowbringers, yeah. we'll be caught up on the podcast so we can get your guys' week by week breakdown of the Shadowbringers at that point. Which is which is crazy. Yeah. I, I, Depending on how many quests we do, right? But, but yeah. Well, I mean, right now we're like, I know you guys have finished. I need to finish up. And then... I'm the only one that's finished right now. Everybody else, they're still, like, everybody's, like, still on post-Stormblood stuff. Ooh, right? okay. They're, yeah, they're yeah, still, yeah. Yeah, I, I am the one that's caught up in Shadowbringers. Like, I, my next two quests lead into Shadowbringers, so I stopped there. Um, But, I mean, from where you are, you, you're about 80% done right now, so, like, for yeah. like, actual Stormblood, and then... You'll be there in no time. Yeah, I'm not even worried. Um, yeah. Because I have the next four days off. And so, so my final question, Fee. Sure. For you is what is... So the live letter is happening tomorrow. What is something mm -hmm. that you're looking forward to? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I would like to see if they make any like major changes to at least... like being a little selfish the things that might be happening to at this point red mage and dark knight um seeing if they make any adjustments there um i want to see more of the reaper because that's one of the new classes that's coming out and it looks pretty sick not gonna lie looks kind of sick yeah. um and so i know a lot of other people are really excited for that one that's all um, you're gonna see it in, in, in uh fucking roulette's are gonna be reapers that's all you're gonna fucking see <laughs> yeah that's why i'm also concerned about becoming one because everyone's gonna be dpsq i mean a bonus for me as a dark knight is i'm probably gonna see more bonuses for tanks because everyone's gonna be reaper so it's gonna be like bonus for healers and tanks exactly. and i'd be like exactly that's exactly how it's gonna be me give me those bonuses um so i 
want to see that maybe see some glimpses i'm going to be a little bit hesitant because i'm slightly worried that there might be some spoilers for like Shadowbringers, bringers they might mention something but i don't think it's going to be something super substantial that i'm going to be like oh my god this open letter has spoiled everything for me <laughs> yeah um. <laughs> i i don't i don't see them doing that but you never know because i guess they can't expect everybody to be like on shot like they got they got they got to expect everybody to be on shadow bringers if they're gonna watch this this live letter right sure Everybody's yeah. gonna be caught. they can't just like say like oh well we're gonna, we got to cater to this we got to cater to that it's like we're, we're just throwing this down this is what the changes are gonna be i'm i'm waiting for the changes i'm waiting for the job changes and i'm hoping i am hoping that they do something about the housing market in this fucking game because it is the most broken thing it is the most yeah. annoying thing they are adding new housing. They're adding Ishgard housing in Ooh. in Endwalker. So if you yeah. ever, if you want to get a house in the Ishgard area, so the snowy area, you can when the when the expansion comes out. So that might alleviate so some pressure because a lot of people are so, gonna, probably going to be going over there. So when we be, um, make the grand um, point in progress um, guild house, it's going to be in Ishgard, overlooking snowy tundras. I mean, I'd be down that- as long as we're not in Ulta. I'm happy. And we're not going to Ulda. We're going to Ishgard because, dude, I wouldn't, even, I wouldn't even mind Sheragane. Like that, that would be cool too. That's the Kugani area. Like that's the that's their housing area, which is awesome too. I didn't know that they had a housing area. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Ishgard's pretty great. I mean, Why I not? I would love Ishgard. Mine's like I would go Ishgard, Gridania, or uh, Sheragane. Those would be those would be the top three for me. Yeah. Old I love you to death, but no. No, I can't. Mm-mm. No, I don't want a house in the desert. Fuck no. I need some water. I mean, you know, that's why I like Gridania. Limsa's nice too. Limsa's actually really, really nice as well. Yeah, water is needed. Um, Olda, as much as I like you, um, sand is not fun. No. So for that reason, you're out. Yeah, it gets everywhere. <laughs> it's coarse. It's rough. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um... No, here's hoping. Also, here's hoping that they talk about the server issues right now because we are in lockdown in our server right now, yeah. my friend. Our, we our, can't, the Aether server is locked down. We can't invite anybody to join us. It's just like, hey, um, excited to play with you in Endwalker <laughs> when you're on your other server. Yeah, well, at least with Endwalker, you can't go cross data center, right? They're adding that thing to it, so they can't do cross... I mean, but but the thing is like yeah right now it's just impossible like it's still locked down cuz uh, one of our friends was uh jumping into it today and all of Aether was locked down yeah yeah so, i mean this is what we get for signing up to join servers in the same place that Asmongold decides to join in yeah with so. a big street Asmongold rich where they all had like summit and everybody and they just they just happened to pick this <laughs> data center <laughs> Asmund was about to pick out a bad toys as well, which is, oh my god, the server would have been fucked. <laughs> I would have been like, peace out, I, this is too crazy. <laughs> We're going to Cactor. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, I'm excited. It's, it's tomorrow at 7pm. Uh, we're not going to be live reacting it, but I think a bunch of us will be in the Discord watching it. Yeah, it is live translated. They have a note on there that is going from Japanese to English live. Ooh. So, and they're live translating it, so that's perfect. So that just means that this was a big deal. Oh, one hundred percent live translated. So they know that they're getting a massive audience, yeah. especially over the past few months. Like it would be silly for them not to do it. Yeah. So. And it's uh, about to go. I think it's uh, about four hours long. That's how it was supposed to be. So four from... hour. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, it's a four-hour live letter. <laughs> What? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's... It ends at 3 a.m. my time, Harv. Yeah. 3 a.m. Yeah, it ends at 11 o'clock over here. <laughs> and I'm going to have to watch it. Yeah. Because now we have this podcast, and I need to be able to write these notes. Yeah, because you know next, next, be next, next week we're going to be talking about... I think we're going we're gonna to do a live letter next week and then punt yeah. uh, the uh, Dragon Song War stuff to the week after, because this is the most crucial shit that we need to talk about. Yeah. So. Man, yeah. what the... Four hours. <laughs> yeah, four, hour, four hours of looking at Final Fantasy news. Who would have thought? Who would have thought five months ago you'd be here? 
doing notes for a four hour open letter. Woo! For Final <laughs> Fantasy. For Final but, Fantasy. Because I don't know how adamant you guys were you guys were against this. <laughs> okay, my biggest concern was the fact that like, okay, I'm gonna lose my job and any sort of relationship slash friendships I ever had. And now Lucas plays, so it's fine. <laughs> as long as he plays, <laughs> we're good. <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Fee. I think that's where we're going to call it today. Fee, where, uh, where can everybody find you? You guys can find me over on Twitter at twitter.com slash You can find me over on Twitch, um, over at twitch.tv slash I took this week off because this week has been bonkers. Um, so I will be starting back up again. Um, there's games I want to play. Um, Gardic Phone is definitely one of them. So Harv. You bet we're going to be playing that game because yeah. we, um, cause it looks hilarious. Um, also, I'm a good drawler and no one else is. Oh, I'm just joking. Um, there's that. You can also find me at <laughs> Game Source Network, where I talk about Stadia every Wednesday, um, Tuesday slash Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. Um, we had a little bit of a delay um, because Jake is on... work he had to go away for work that's mm. what he's doing i had to think about it i apologize um so speaking of stadia you can also find me on um, twitch.tv slash point in progress usually every friday but we're taking this week off um because everyone but now me um has plans this weekend um so <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, you you had like the you had like the biggest one of the biggest plan well, not the biggest plan but you had a big plan this weekend too. <laughs> I sure did. I and sure now, did. And now it's nothing. And now it's um me going crazy um and watching a four hour letter. <laughs> but um but yeah you can find me I'm usually on twitch.tv slash point of progress where we talk about games um we li- live stream our podcast also we play games over on that channel every so often and we probably are going to be doing a lot more during spooky season Woo! um so look forward to that guys look forward to that yeah you can find me uh here on point in progress you can find me at beard in the hair pretty much everywhere except on youtube which is beard in the hair gaming uh i am my schedule is weird this week but next week i should be back to my normal schedule of uh monday my wednesday thursday mm-hmm. saturday uh but uh yeah thank you guys so much for joining us on this fantasy in progress episode uh three right we're on episode three episode three this is episode three yeah episode three uh appreciate you guys thank you guys so much for listening uh we'll be back again next week for the live letter just kind of summary of it and what we think about the changes that they're going to be making Mm -hmm. but until then guys thank you guys so much for watching slash listening